Tonight, President Akufado reveals full cost of Agenda 111 to build 101 hospitals across the country. As he declares to his critics, he will finish all the hospitals before he leaves office. And the entire package at an estimated cost of 1.765 billion United States dollars. And it is my determination that the entire project will be completed before I leave office on 7th January And Top Story is always uh, brought to you by Vodafone and Prime Insurance. It was originally billed to be completed in 18 months. Well, tonight we're hearing from the president, President Akufado, that his flagship health intervention to build 101 hospitals across the country, popularly uh, branded as Agenda 111, will not complete, he says, before he leaves office. As has become clear that the original plan uh, may not materialize in the time frame that had originally been communicated. We are also today learning for the first time the full cost of the entire project. The president pegs it at $1.7 billion. It comes days after John News had uh, exercised his right under the writing formation uh, law uh, and requested for some details, including cost uh, implications, and uh, had been told by the health ministry that the uh, information uh, wasn't in its custody. Well, the president has been giving uh, some details at least today uh, when uh, at an event uh, where he was speaking about his health policy. Many of us here are aware of the commitments made by government since January 2017 when I took office in the areas of education, health, and technology. Over the last five years, we have pursued policies in these sectors of national life to improve its quality and help place our nation onto the path of sustained development, progress, and prosperity. As you may be aware, the Ministry of Health has recently launched the Universal Health Coverage, UHC, roadmap. The vision of this roadmap is to guarantee good health care for all people living in Ghana. To set out clearly the UHC government for Ghana, a national definition of UHC has been stated as, and I quote, all people in Ghana have timely access to high quality health services, irrespective of ability to pay at the point of use, i.e. care, unquote. With this definition of UHC, every Ghanaian will have access to quality health care services without money being a barrier with the National Health Insurance Scheme helping to realize this. Ensuring access to services is not limited to geographical accessibility, but also to timely access to health services, especially in the context of emergency care. Government's commitment to improving our health care delivery system is evident in the Agenda 111 initiative. This project will provide 101 standard 100-bed district hospitals with accommodation for doctors and nurses in districts without district hospitals. Six new regional hospitals for each of the six new regions. Rehabilitate the Afia and Quanta Hospital in the Western Region. One new regional hospital for the Western Region 
and three psychiatric hospitals for each of the three zones of the country, that is the north, middle, and coastal. And the entire package at an estimated cost of 1.765 billion United States dollars. Such a development will help make Ghana a center of medical excellence and a preferred destination for medical tourism in West Africa. A great deal of the preparatory work for the execution of this ambitious project has been completed, and it is my determination that the entire project will be completed before I leave office on 7 January 2025. Our next step is to improve on the accreditation seals for our hospitals and even go ahead to acquire international accreditation seals such as Joint Commission International. This so that's a president there um, uh, talking today about uh, the Agenda 111 um, and his commitment to now complete the project. Uh, of course, uh, before he leaves office, that will be in January uh, 2025. Uh, in fact, if you look at the original plan uh, that was communicated when it was first uh, released, it was supposed to have been completed in 18 months. Uh, but this, uh, of course, was would have been in early 2023, the latest. Uh, uh, of course, the president is committed to, to ensuring uh, that this is done, he says now, uh, before he, he, he leaves office. And he talks today uh, extensively. Now we're getting to know the, the full cost of the project, which is uh, $1.7 billion. Uh, we've, we've asked this week for uh, the cost and also the issue about the source of that fund that we're now uh, getting to know about um I, I you know that the minority had been asking uh, questions on this and they've tabled several questions before parliament for further clarity on the issue of agenda 111 and uh, we're getting a bit more today let me bring in uh, the ranking member of the finance on the health committee in parliament um minta kando who of course has been uh, raising questions about the cost and also sources of funding and the timing for completion of the projects Ms. kando thank you for your time uh here on top story Hello, Evans. Can you hear me? I can hear loud and clear. Uh, so the, the president uh, talks about the full cost now at uh, $1.7 uh, billion. Uh, Is it an amount that I know your, your committee have requested and have been briefed uh, on this many times? Uh, is it the cost that you're aware of? Well, okay. Um, Evans, um, to start with, let me say good evening to your listeners and indicate that anybody who believes this president does so at least for her own risk. And um, we're talking about this several times. If you remember the background of this project, the president started commissioning us from, I mean, 88 hospitals, and these 88 hospitals were supposed to have been completed somewhere the end of 2021, if you remember. And as I speak to you now, not a single hospital has been completed. In fact, in the entire six years of the president, it hasn't completed, started, continued, and completed a single hospital project in this country. That's number one. Evans, I will tell you the strategy today and mark it on the wall. Just like I tell you almost every day and it comes to pass. Mark it. The strategy is simple. We have not been told where the president hasn't told us where he's going to get the money to even do this project. The sort of funding we don't even know yet. So because it's a political statement or a political promise, what is going to happen is that from now to 2025, the president is going to struggle to get about one or two or three of these facilities completed. And then the other other side, you go, you see some one chip of sand here, some gravels there, some blocks there, so that in the 2024 elections, the MPP and the president will come back and tell us that, look, have you seen we have started this project? Give us the opportunity and let's continue to come and uh, let's continue or let's come and complete those projects. Even if you recall, the president told the two people of this country that this project will be completed from 12 to 18 months. Why is he talking about 2025 now? Why is he talking about 2025 now? Now, 
almost every project in the health sector, as far as the patriarchal is concerned, has a caption agenda 111. Where is this coming from? Where is this coming from? So the thing is opaque. I keep telling you, there's no transparency with regards to, even nobody knows the procurement process they are using at all. Nobody I'm- knows it. I mean, on the on the timelines, uh, he says um, he's committed to wrap finishes before he leaves office. I mean, before he leaves office, could be actually be this year or next year. So, I mean, yes, Why can't they've you overshot the time a bit from the initial Every project must be time bound. You know, the president says that he has done done the mathematics and he's now telling us the cost of it. You see, before any responsible government even pronounces any project. There are first two fundamental things you must declare. One is the cost of the project. Two is the source of funding. If you wait after committing a project, I mean, so many months down the lane, before you come and tell us that you have now done the mathematics and this is the contract sum, how did you even arrive at 111? I'm curious. I mean, they've come to Parliament to seek funding for this. They didn't say in the document before Parliament how much exactly the entire project will cost? Well, the, as far as I am concerned, um, when they did a presentation before the Parliamentary Service Committee on Health, they said they needed five billion Ghana cities for this year alone. And then when we asked them about the sources of funding, I mean, they were very elusive. Um, district hospital, they said something like GOG, psychiatric hospital, they said GOG, and even... You know how we are suffering as a country, this economy, struggling even to pump uh, um, $2 billion into the system. As I speak to you now, the government or the minister responsible for finance is owing the National Health Insurance Fund in excess of $2 billion. Cities. Where are we going to get the money? We must be clear. We must be clear in our minds. Are they now thinking of putting some banks together and then the bank would then credit them or give them some facilities to embark on this. I mean, at the end of the day, we end up creating problems for everybody. Now, the trap was that, when we started, the trap was that, okay, um, let's say we are going to construct, I mean, 111 hospitals, and let them say we cannot do it, then I will prove them wrong. But you know, what you say outside there is different from what you present to us in Parliament. It's different. It's different. Even... Well, you know, in this country, when they were specific, specific, the president and, uh, I mean, the minister responsible for information, all of them indicated that this project was, they were going to complete it within 12 to 18 months. They were specific. I'm bound. Well, you know, in this country, when they said that the 88, they were going to complete by the end of 2021, yeah, I mean, so that, 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 was, that was without doubt indeed. The president himself had uh, specified the, the time frame um, for this. This, this, is the, this, is, this is the president speaking about this. Each hospital is being constructed at a cost of 16.88 million United States dollars. That is 12.8 million United States dollars for construction and 4 million United States dollars for medical equipment. All the hospitals are to be completed in 18 months. Work will commence on the regional and other hospitals in the latter part of the year. Okay, so this is the president. This is in, in the 2021 uh, when uh, they, they laid the plan out, saying, of course, 18 months there. Um, but, of course, he's, he is within time, is he not? I mean, it's not 18 months yet. But everything is clear, Ivan. You know, we are now preparing the minds of Ghanaians. You see now, he's mentioning 2025. Preparing our minds that, look, we will not be able to finish in, 20, in 2018 months. I mean, to, to be fair to him, he says, before my, my term ends. So that could be and earlier. Are, even, just like we say all the time, and you play the devil's advocate. At the end of the, I mean, uh, uh, 18 months, we cannot commit to any hospital. Didn't this happen with regards to the 88? Did we commit to any hospital? In fact, which one did we even start? This is a We live in, in, in this country. We live with them. They present the, uh, the financial strength of, of, of this country to us in Parliament. And at the end of the day, you see, the, the, the interesting aspect is that 
before you believe that what we are saying, or before you get to know that we are telling us lies, you would have caused the havoc. That is my pain. Today, what I'm saying to you today, I know there are a number of people out there who may be doubting, but before they believe what we are saying, the harm has already been caused. I, let, let me ask you finally. Um, you, again, you filed some questions in, in Parliament to get clarity to some of the questions you raised. Um, are you any closer to getting the answers? Nobody has presented any answer as of now. Nobody. It, I mean, a number of questions, including even the National Health Insurance Scheme 1. You know, Eva, do you know that the National Health Insurance formula should not go beyond March every year now we are getting to the end of march we have we don't even have i mean any document before the the, the committee that we are considering we have even tabled it in our state, business statement that by the close of next week we should be acting it. We, we don't we, we are not aware now um service providers as you know are threatening if you walk to most of the facilities it's cash and carry because the minister responsible for finance is owning the fund in excess of $2 billion. This is what is happening. But if you call them now, if you ask them, they will tell you different things. But we are in parliament. We know what is happening. Look, the National Health Insurance I mean, Fund is the most reliable fund you can ever get because it is not government money. It's not as if government must go for a loan or something. You, if you buy a blade or what, you pay National Health Insurance levy. It's a matter of government collecting it and lodging it into the fund. Mm. Now, it has also become a tag of war. What country are we living in? Well, I'm grateful, Amita Kanda, for, for your time on this. Um, now we know a bit more about the cost, uh, $1.7 billion, and the president has given a, a time frame that uh, he will do it before uh, he leaves office. Mita Kando is the minority spokesperson on health. Um, also joining me right now is uh, the uh, General Secretary of the Ghana Medical Association. The President uh, also today uh, went whilst was speaking uh, at this event uh, where uh, this is the addressing the 60th anniversary of the establishment of the University of Ghana Medical School. It was clear that doctors uh, are refusing to accept postings to rural communities and he had a special appeal uh, to Dr. Yang Singh and his colleagues. Subject that has been topical for many years. Our medical schools have a good rep- have got a good reputation and have been training good doctors and dentists who find work with some ease in all parts of the world. But the doctor-dentist population ratio in our country still remains unsatisfactory after 65 years of nationhood. We currently do not have the right numbers of doctors, dentists, and healthcare professionals with the right mix of skills and expertise in our regions, districts, and deprived communities, especially for the newly created regions and districts. The news of doctors refusing postings to these areas is thus particularly distressing. I encourage all medical practitioners to follow the worthy example of your great forebears, like Dr. Charles Eastman, Dr. Evan Zanford, and their likes, who readily accepted postings in their early years, at a time when the national infrastructure was even more harrowing than it is today. They did so because they believed in the Hippocratic oath they took impose a duty on them to offer their services, especially to the most needy. It was their work that helped build our nationwide health system with, from which we are all benefiting. I'm therefore appealing to you, as passionately as I can, to accept postings to accredited regional and district hospitals where your services are needed most. So that is the president there uh, extending an appeal. He says it's distressing that doctors, um, medical uh, officers are refusing postings. And he has a special appeal uh, to the doctors. Uh, as you know now, uh, well, not only doctors, nurses as well, I must, must assume, but uh, the Ghana Medical Association represents the doctors. Uh, General Secretary uh, Dr. Justice Yangtze uh, joins us on the telephone line. Uh, Dr. Yangtze, the president says it's distressing 
um, that um, your colleagues are refusing posting to some of these remote areas, and it has a special appeal to you. What's what's your what's your response to to that appeal? Okay. Good evening, Evans. Uh, let me just make this quick correction. Uh, I see been the general secretary somewhere in November last year. As we speak, I'm not the vice president. Oh, vice so, president. Of course, of course, of it. course. Um, I'll, I'll bring a sheep's head um, <laughs> as, as after this. Yes. Give me your response okay. to the president. Yes. Okay, so um, l let me say that uh, the comments from the president eulogizing uh, doctors who have served their country in the past is worth noting. Two, his appeal, I think, generally sings well with all of us as a group. To add to that, as we speak, you go to the districts, you go to the regions, and you find medical doctors and dentists working in there. So in terms of the sacrifice, we are already doing it. What is missing is the ability to attract and retain the right caliber in terms of the numbers, the skill mix, and then also the non-availability of those specialized equipment that some of the specialists may need to work in those facilities. That is the general platform. Then we zoom in to the real problems that one may describe as, in quotes, doctors refusing postings. Truth ought to be told that the world of today is quite different from the world of yesteryear. This issue of, in quotes, doctors not going to the districts and some deprived areas is not one that is limited to the medical profession alone. Look at all the professional groupings we have in this country, from law, through medicine, engineering, accounting, you name them. How many qualified engineers, lawyers are living in these deprived and rural areas? The human society or human nature as it is, is always driven and attracted towards the good. And that is why people will look for greener pastures, irrespective of the potential cost that may come their way. The president seemed to put you in a, in a special category. He says your Hippocratic oath is different. I mean, engineers, they don't, they don't you know, Look, they don't Evans, swear in Evans, the Hippocratic Evans, oath. we all go to the same market. We all aspire to be the highest in terms of whatever the profession can offer you and whatever you can also offer to the society and to your family. The reality is that as we speak, doctors are in high demand. We are competing for their skills, both within and without. So in country, there is a huge competition between the private sector, the quasi government, and government as in the mainstream public service. People are coming up with huge medical facilities. It is these same professionals who are needed to work in there. Mind you, these days, doctors pay huge sums of money to go to school here in Ghana and pass out as doctors. Some are even paying in dollars, but by way of the city equivalent. Some are taking loans and all other forms of you know, uh, financing to make sure that they are able to go through. And people are finishing school with huge sums of, in quotes, uh, debt on their hands and that of their families, and they need to recoup them. So we need to put things in the right context. As has been done elsewhere, and as, as the Medical Association has always advised government and the Ministry of Health for that matter. So what would it take then? That the, the best way out is that we need to put in a proper structure have a proper document which we will all be committed to by way of implementation. And that will capture in detail 
what we can put together as a country to attract and retain people in these remote areas. It could be monetary and man- non-monetary. We are not calling for people to be paid to become, in quotes, the brigades of this world. That is not what we are saying. But you have a situation where, in some of these deprived areas, the basic social amenities do not exist in these places. You go there and you may have to even run a dual approach in terms of owning uh, a home. You live there and probably the rest of your family will live in Accra or any other city. And somebody has to pay for all this. If you want to take your kids there, then what it means is that by the time probably they even come to Accra, they would have lost out in terms of education. Nobody wants that. Let's also understand that even within our sub-region and the African continent, countries are able to attract Ghanaian doctors and retain them in their countries. We were the first, you know, country to gain independence south of the Sahara and what have you. What are we doing for our doctors? So, so you, I, I hear you say the state hasn't done enough to get the doctors moving to these areas. Exactly so. You see, our constitution injuncts the state to ensure that the people of Ghana have access to medical care. Look, you cannot compel a professional or anybody to work for you as an employer. And government as an employer must know that for a fact. Same situation, you cannot also compel an employer to employ you. Now, once the state is injuncted to provide the best for us in terms of health care, then there is a duty on the state to ensure that they are able to train and also attract and retain these doctors. Why is it that people are leaving the shores of Ghana for greener pastures? Because the basic things don't work. Mm. You sign basic contracts of employment with the employer, and same will not be implemented. You go to the workplace, and sometimes the facilities that should exist for you to work with are just not there. Sometimes the opportunity for you to improve yourself by way of career progression don't even exist. So we should not isolate doctors, and with all due respect, let it look as if we are the only ones refusing to go to places. Mm -hmm. The solution is that we need to put in a proper incentive package both monetary and non-monetary to attract and retain people to these areas but i must add that in recent times government has set up a committee through the ministry of health and the ghana health service that is trying to come up with a document of this nature and it is our hope that this will be completed soon and then same will be implemented to the latter Mm. Without that, this problem will compound as we move forward. Truth is that not too long ago, on this same platform, as in the Joy or the multimedia platform, you had calls to discuss the recent movement of doctors out of Ghana to other countries. This is a scenario that seemed to have abated uh, for some time, but now it is back with us. Mm. Most young doctors and middle-level specialist doctors are living. There are incentives being thrown at them by these other countries. We are not asking for, in quote, heaven. We are not asking for riches or anything, but just the basics. Mm. And if these things are not corrected, the appeals will happen. Some of us may heed the appeals, but the majority may not, mm. because they live in a society that they also need to fit in. It is pathetic that doctors can retire and might not ever be able to even own a small home in this country if you want to follow the system as it is. And in your retirement, nobody cares about you. You work in the hospital, you might never have access to health care or any other thing. We are confronted by real problems. Well, um... And we need to understand that whatever the solutions are, it will involve the doctors, the employer, and government, for that matter, being committed to ensuring that, look, the right things and right incentives are put in place to help resolve these issues. Uh, Justice Young Singh, thank you very much. Uh, he's a vice president of the Ghana Medical Association. Uh, what's your view on this? Uh, let's continue the conversation on many social media platforms. Uh, it's not time for Ghana Connect here.